Now, it's time to reach and engage your tribe. How do you actually do it? It's about building your tribe, okay? It's about nurturing your community. Uh, it is a dialogue with fellow travelers, okay? So you build relationship, you serve those who share our passion. That's what you're doing. You're, you take leadership position in your community, you serve them, and uh, you nurture the relationship um, because they need leadership. They, they don't know what to do. They like what you do. They, they, uh, they, their passions are awakened by your cause and their project, and they want to help out, but they don't know what to do. You have to provide leadership, but you also have to take responsibility for taking care of the relationship. Okay, so one way to do that is to have a regular email, a newsletter, so this is your digital personal email. Uh, a long time ago, <laughs> before email, we sent personal letters to our friends. <laughs> we, you know, we, we literally <laughs> write it down, write a letter, sealed with a kiss sometimes if you're <laughs> writing a love letter, and you, you mail it. Okay? It's very personal. It's no different. But this time it's digital. It's a personal letter to somebody, to a friend, to somebody who, who shares the same passion as you do, and you're, you're sending a, a personal email, okay? So you can promote events, you can promote volunteer opportunities, you share your successes because they're part of that success, and you recognize supporters as well, okay? Never send unsolicited email to anyone. Only send this kind of email to people who expect email from you. Ang tawag sa unsolicited email is spam. It goes to the spam box. <laughs> okay? So, uh, when we were uh, going on our 2013 campaign, we sent an email to people who had already been part of our community. And this is how it looked like. Um, I'll show you how the whole email appeared. Uh, okay. I, I used a, a, a software called MailChimp. It's, it's a good tool to manage your email newsletter. Okay. Uh, we can't go deep into it today, but you can try it out, MailChimp. Uh, it, it allows you to come up with a, a template for your email. You can come up with a nice design for your email. They have existing templates. You can just pick and choose, but you can also customize the design. You can have a, you know, a branded email. It also allows you, so you can put in your friend's email already. You can plug it in or you can import an Excel file of, uh, of, of your uh, database. And you can also set up a facility where you invite people to become part of your mailing list. For example, in your website, they can click on it and they go to a MailChimp uh, tool and they become part of your, of your mailing list. So there, these are things that you can do. You will have to explore it at a certain point. If you don't have it, then a regular email client will, be, will do, okay? Gmail will do. An Excel file of all your, you know, you have your contact list on Gmail anyway, so you can do that. Uh, if you're, you don't have 100,000 email addresses in your list, that's, you know, you can manage perhaps 100, 200 people in your email list that you regularly send email to. I, that's, that's still workable, I think. So, Gmail can work, you can, you can use Gmail, but you know, at a certain point, you may want to consider going into a service like MailChimp, okay? So for example, we sent this email. Um, so I sent this to a friend called named Johnny, um, and uh, it's a personal ask. I'd like to ask you to consider participating in a project that will help create beautiful Christmas memories for underprivileged kids in Clarabel, Bulacan, Philippines. Okay, that, that's the 
That's the elevator pitch, right? Okay, it's called the Best Child Project. And then I talk about it. I share what the project is all about. I shared who our partners are. I talked about TV5, Unilever, uh, and some other uh, partners. I talked about there are already 90 people who are part of this uh, community. And then I shared with them how John can help. 500 pesos to give a gift, Noche Buena, etc., etc. We're targeting this amount. And, and I asked them, if you want to learn more about this, click on this link, which is the website, so they get to know more about it. They get to see all of the pictures and all of the articles. And it's an invitation to become more involved in the project by inviting them into the website. Okay, so it can be something like that. Since I use email, a MailChimp, you know, I can place things like this on the side. So aside from the text here, I also included a short, uh, the, 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 the elevator pitch basically, I placed on the side. I placed some pictures of endorsements, okay, TV file to make it much more credible. And then I place uh, the ask, send your donation now. And so all in one email, all the major elements are there. Okay, send them out. I usually have about a 30% response rate. That's high. But that's because these are sent to people that we know and who know us. And so those who, uh, who do respond, actually, they do trust us already. Um, so if you do something like this, you may actually have a high response rate as well. If we have a wow factor, you have a clear um, elevator pitch, and you have the home base and the embassy, you have your your framework all set up. You launch a newsletter like this, you may get a pretty good response rate. And basically what you want to do is you build a, your subscriber list. People who trust you and you collect their email. So over time, as you continue sending them email, it would be good to have, for you to have a regular email schedule for your, for your uh, supporters. There are effective blog posts and there are more effective blog posts, okay? We won't get deep into this today. Um, if we're not into, you know, SEO anyway, if we're really communicating with very close friends, the people who already know us, uh, this won't be necessary at this point. But it would be good to, it would be good to uh, learn about effective blogging at a certain point. Um, it's good, this might be interesting. An effective blog post will be read in seven minutes. <laughs> they, they track the performance of different blog posts based on length and there's a curve and the most effective one at the, uh, at the height of the curve is seven minutes. So they, you know, they estimated it to be between 100 to 1,600 words. If you're writing something on your blog, do not exceed 1,600 words. My suggestion is, being a Filipino, and we don't really read, we don't read that much. If you can keep your post to within 700, 500 to 700 is going to be much more effective. And you have a picture or an infographic, Okay. If you can keep it that short, you, you share one aspect of what you're doing, it's not that long, you don't have to share everything in one post, keep it short, 500 to 700 words, you're good. If you can do it in 300 words, I think it, that's, that's even better. Okay? Okay, now let's talk about, you know, planning it out. And when you start communicating to your, to either your community or your committed followers, you have to have 
a content calendar. Okay? You have to plan it out. You have to plan in advance what you're going to say to your followers. Well, of course, you don't know the details, but you have to have an idea of how you will tell the story over time. Okay? You're telling, there's a grand narrative in your, in your mission, and you're unfolding the story. Parang telling novela eh. Okay? You're unfolding one part of the story at a certain point. You draw them into the story. The story isn't finished yet, so they're waiting for the next installment. That's basically what you're doing, okay? You're unfolding the story over time. You tell them about the grand story of what you're trying to do. You're helping out 500 women in, uh, in Mandaluyong to have a break this Christmas. That's a, that's a bigger picture. But there are a lot of details going there. And you talk about it. And, you know, it's an unfolding, uh, uh, it's, it's an unfolding story. As people get drawn into the story, you know, they get more involved in it, okay? So you need to plan it out. You need to have a content calendar. Uh, so you identify topics, you look for available content, you schedule it, you publish, you promote it on social media, you chat and tweet you until you get really right, okay? As, an example of a content calendar, if, for example, you're, we're doing it on a weekly basis, some of you may have the capacity to post daily. When we did rightnow.ph, we planned for a daily post. So that's why we, we uh, recruited dozens of writers, so that some writers will be contributing a post every month or every week. So we always had content available. So we had a, a, full, a full content calendar of, of daily posts. We were able to do that. But for most of us, we don't have enough writers. We will probably be writing, what, maybe one post a week. OK, so then let's do so. At least there's a regular post that comes out. There's, a, there's regularity. You build expectation. People will begin to expect your next blog post, and that's the way you build a relationship. If you build a calendar for, uh, for a, a fundraising campaign, for example, so maybe on the first week you launch it with a general ask, this is what we're trying to do, uh, we hope you will uh, help us, it's a general ask. And then on the second week, I'll talk about these are things we're doing right now, um, Brother James is doing this. Sister Marie is actually, you know, helping out in other things. I, I, you know, I'm, I'll draw them into the story. This is what they're doing right now. They know about the bigger story already, and I'm talking about how we're starting off great. Okay? And then I talk about, you know, based on our initial ask, you know, we, we already got some response, and uh, praise the Lord, we already have X amount. And then maybe as we work on endorsements, I talk about the endorsements as well. Hey, TP5 is joining us again. And uh, we're, we're, we have a meeting with, uh, uh, with the mayor tomorrow. And uh, we'll talk about it sometime later uh, as, we, as we move forward. You, you share these stories with them. You draw them in to your, your narrative. You talk about the progress of the, the preparations. You talk about milestones met. We've already achieved 50% of our financial target, praise the Lord. And uh, we need so much more. And, uh, uh, and now we can uh, start spending on this because we already have this much money. Okay? So they, they get drawn into the story. Talk about institutional supporters. Unilever came in. Jollibee came in. Um, we have more volunteers signing up. Okay? And then until we say, Praise the Lord, we've met 100% of, uh, of our fundraising target and uh, you know, we couldn't have done it without you. And okay. Then we talk about the preparation for an event, for example, in our case, we were having a Christmas party. We talked about a week before the event, we talked about the height of the preparation. And then 
on the week itself of the event, I talked about the outcome of the event. And so we, we shared a lot of photos and we shared a lot of uh, uh, comments and, and all. So they, they are brought into the story, they see it from the start until it is concluded. They have the satisfaction that I'm part of that story. I was, you know, I made it happen. I, I contributed my 500 bucks and, you know, I, I know that one kid is happy now because of my 500 bucks. That's, in a sense, that's how I do it. Wow. And then you, you draw them in, you, you, you pull them into your story, you draw them in, get them more interested about it, you, you invite them in to, to participate, and you pull them in some more into the, into the story. That's how you do it. You're building a community.